Modern day phone and TV screens have become incredibly beautiful, vibrant, and bright but so many of them can suffer from one catastrophic issue that is rendering them completely useless. Let's talk tech. I'm Arnaud with Ardently Tech, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a pretty scary issue that is affecting a lot of phones, TV screens, and computers. And that's an issue called screen burn-in. We're gonna be talking about why you should care about it and how to prevent it. But before we get into all of that, we have to talk about what screen burn-in is. Screen burn-in in the modern sense of the word is a permanent discoloration of screens commonly found in OLED screens, usually from a static image remaining on screen for an extended period of time. This essentially leaves behind a static ghost image of the previous screen that follows you throughout different areas of your phone, computer, or TV. Now this isn't a new issue, this is a problem that's honestly been around in older TVs dating back many decades ago. Back in those small tube TVs, and even 15, 20 years ago with plasma screens, it's unfortunately becoming fairly common with OLED screens as well. And screen burn-in is such an issue that that is the whole reason why screen savers were made in the first place. Screen savers, as I'm sure you've seen on TVs, old DVD players, computers, and so many other things are basically a either a picture or text that is moving across the screen where your screen gets a bit dimmer and you're essentially seeing a move moving image that basically freezes your device and so when you're ready to come back to it then that screensaver goes away and now you're back into your device. And so this issue with screen burn-in can affect so many different products in so many ways that a lot of people might not even realize. Like with TVs for example, you can have your static image at the bottom of your screen of your news channel that you're watching that has the static ticker of whatever the top news stories going on and that constant little display bar at the bottom of the screen can potentially cause screen burn-in given that it is a static image that is constantly on the screen. And so while the whole screen may not be a static image, if any part of it contains a static piece of information, that unfortunately could cause a permanent imprint on the screen. You see this in sports too with the score ticker at the bottom of the screen. Or maybe you're playing your Xbox or PlayStation in the living room on the TV and your heads up display on the shooter that you're playing or the RPG that you're playing, well, that can leave an imprint on your screen too if you're playing for an extended period of time and usually in a repeated basis as well. With phones, you can have the static image of your wallpaper. In some extreme cases, if you're reading something on like the Kindle app and you're on that screen for a long time, well, that text on the screen could also leave an imprint. Even your home screen where you see all of your apps and folders and widgets, that static image and that static bit of information could leave you susceptible to screen burning on your phone. But with all that said, here is why you should care about screen burning and why you should be wanting to try to do what you can to prevent it. For starters, screen burning is not something that is reversible. True screen burning is a permanent discoloration and imprint of the screen or a piece of information on your screen that follows you all throughout your device. Think of it like a permanent scar that is consistently on your screen that you just always have to look past and get over every time you're using your device. While in many cases this may not actually affect the functionality of your phone or your TV, you can still use these things and watch programs and play games and see all the different things that you want to see. In some extreme cases though, this can actually cause functionality issues in that your device can't actually reach peak brightness or maybe it can achieve the deepest colors that it is designed to get. So for lack of a better term, this pretty much destroys your quality and your experience. And so before I get into how you can actually prevent this in some very simple, quick and easy ways, I do wanna remind you to hit that like and subscribe button because that is the biggest way you can help support this channel. We're on our fast track to hitting 5,000 subscribers and we would love to hit that by the end of the year. Here at Ardently Tech, we believe tech was made to make your life easier. So we're here to help you understand, discover and protect that tech that was made to improve your life. Now, there are very many simple things that you can do to help prevent screen burn-in on your phone, your TV, or your computer. And all of this can be pretty much done on all of your devices in about five minutes. 
Now, if you're already seeing signs of screen burn-in, like I said, in very, very, very many cases, that is something that is not reversible. However, if it's in the earliest stages, in some cases, some people have found some relief in going to some of the YouTube videos that claim to fix screen burn-in. It's usually a very long video and it's essentially going to show a bunch of colors and moving pixels. And essentially what it's trying to do is help reinvigorate the pixels of your screen. And so in some very rare cases that can actually help and it's a free way to try to fix the issue. However, if your device is not getting fixed after watching one of those videos, maybe you're letting them play overnight and you check it in the morning and you still have that imprint on your screen, given that it's not reversible, you're kind of stuck with what you have. However, if you have no signs of this, well, there's a lot of very simple things that you can do to prevent it. And with your TV, pretty much all you have to do is lower the peak brightness on your TV. In some higher end TVs that have auto brightness as an available feature, well, you can turn that on so that during the brightest hours of the day, maybe you have sun shining on your TV and so it's triggering that peak brightness, but then later in the afternoon or at night, the sun isn't directly shining on it. You don't necessarily need it to be as peak bright as it was. And so having that brightness toned down can help from the pixels reaching their max display limits. On some devices like Roku's and Fire TVs and Apple TVs, you can set the settings so that the moving wallpaper turns on a bit sooner so that that static image of your home screen UI isn't going to potentially leave an imprint and screen burn in. And those same things that you can do with your TV are pretty much the same things you can do on your computer as well, as far as changing the brightness, turning on auto brightness if you have that feature, and definitely turning on that screensaver setting so that it puts your computer to sleep and turns off that display, or at least that static image of the display, a lot sooner, especially if you're gonna be walking away from it and you're not gonna be directly looking at the screen. Now for phones, thankfully there's a couple of other options that you can do. You can do all of those same things. You can also turn on the auto brightness on your phone. You can adjust the screen timeout timer so that it turns your screen off sooner rather than later. You can also adjust the color temperature of your screen. You can either permanently adjust the color temperature or what I like to do is turn on night shift mode. Now a pretty big feature in a lot of modern day flagship phones is the always on display. And on the earlier models of always on display, screen burn-in was unfortunately becoming a pretty big issue with those because for those of you that don't know, always on display is essentially giving you information, glanceable information of your phone when you have your phone off, the screen is off, but you're still able to see the time, maybe some widget information. You in some cases can see the wallpaper as well. And so with these static bits of information on the earlier models that adopted the always on display feature, that unfortunately left an imprint that was permanently on these displays that many people unfortunately fell prey to. However, newer models are much better about that in that they've had updates in essentially doing very small things of, in some cases, they will swap out the background every few minutes, or in some cases, they will do some very minute things like slightly moving the pixels. And so thankfully, the newer phones are a lot better with their always on display feature and the reports of screen burn-in on newer models with always on display are thankfully going drastically down. Now listen, over the years we've seen a lot of innovations in battery life, camera quality, the portability of phones, like the foldable features in some of the Samsung and other Android phones. However, one of the biggest areas that we've seen lacking of innovation is fixing some of these screen burn-in issues in OLED screens. We've seen some of the updates, like I said before, but unfortunately you can't really do anything with the static UI that's on the home screen or even the static information at the top of the screen, like your phone, your Wi-Fi connection, your signal strength, all the things that are kind of statically on there at the top of your screen. And this is an area that I would love to see some big innovation, but unfortunately we haven't seen some more innovation, at least more than I would like to see. And so with all this talk about innovation, let's continue that conversation in this video right here, where we talk about smartphones and the lack of innovation in the recent years. And if you've stuck around for this long, make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.